Welcome back to the Arcast Podcast. We're on this very special episode today. We're talking to one of our special guests. Came in today. Came in from California yesterday. Uh, Maurice Ford. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. Pretty good. Okay. Glad to be here. Glad to be with family. And my book signing the Saturday, so I'm glad Absolutely. to be doing that, man. Promote my book. Uh, promote my message as well, man. Sure. Five times a slave. How childhood trauma can create a career criminal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to get it out to uh, many people as possible. Spread the word to the youth, mostly too, to uh, you know, um, at risk youth. Sure. And uh, try to let them know, man, that uh, there's another way, and if uh, they can avoid prison, uh, crime, anything like that, you know, I'm I'm the guy, you know, I'm the guy to to try to do that. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So author. Right. Was it? Did that just come out of nowhere? Like you were like, I, I want to write a book, and so I'm gonna sit down and start writing. Well, um. I had been doing it for a couple of years, and I feel like in some was inside of me was like, man, I need to tell this story. And then I have uh, my lady; she, she's an author as well, and a, a guy that I was in prison with, he had a, a juvenile life sentence. So when he got out through that new law, he wrote a book as well. So when I got out, when I got out after him, I read his book. I was like, okay, this cool. Yeah. It's kind of guided me in the right direction. Then I met my lady. You know, she wrote a book, and I figured like this is confirmation. I need to go ahead and tell my story. <laughs> So, you know, I did it for a couple of years. I put it down because some things in there, you'd be like, man, I don't want nobody to know that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I pick it back up, write some more, pick it back up, write some more. And eventually, um, January, around January this year, me and my lady, we edited it, you know, put it together. She put it on Amazon for me, and we just went from there. Great. Yeah, you always have to have those support, right? Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. family members yeah. that are helping you out, whatever you're Yeah, because I, I, I just knew how to write it on a piece of paper. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know nothing about how to put it, edit it. Right, put it on Amazon, none of that type stuff. Amazing. So, where did you get your writing skills from? Um, well, I think this was for me it was easy because it's my story. You know, what I'm saying I, I did maybe a little research on things I might have to update or forgot, sure. but it was basically easy for me because it's my story. Yeah, you know, I know my story better than anybody else. You know, so uh, and I, I can't kind of always wrote, man. That's like I wrote books or. I call them like uh, I was religious in prison, so I wrote kind of like you know those kind of books in prison, but I never really just kept with nothing, published nothing from there. But I like to write. Even when I was young, I can remember writing, man, uh, writing stories, mm -hmm. like in uh, elementary and stuff yeah. like that. I was real good at like my imagination, writing stories. That's great. So you had a little bit of practice. Just had a little bit of practice. Yeah, man. yeah. You're all building up to of course. writing your first book, yep. my story. Yeah, it's sort of a culmination of all your the time that you put into all your writing. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we definitely want to get into your story um, and like what started the inspiration to be able to write this. You know, five times a slave and how childhood trauma. Uh, you know, how does how does that affect you know you as an adult? Right. Your decision making. Um, so I guess we'll, let's start with your story. You know, period. What what happens to inspire the story? Well, really, it was like it's like trauma. Cause I really didn't understand what trauma mm -hmm. was like. Uh, it's kind of like a new word, you know what I'm saying? But I always knew that uh, what I went through through the, uh, when I uh, talked about it in the book and at the age of 13. But um, I never knew how it affected my life until I just realized what trauma was and how it affects you. As even as an adult, something like that can happen at, at 13. And um, I knew that through the years, a lot of stuff I did it was based off that that um, anger mm -hmm. and the image in my head that I that I uh, wrote about. So um, it kind of inspired me to like to share it with other people and let them know that, uh, you know, and, I, and what, one thing I push to is, is uh, therapy. You know what I'm saying? I, I haven't tried it. I feel like uh, <clears throat> I feel like I've looked at myself enough in the mirror in prison because I've been to prison five times so I named a book Five Times a Slave. I feel like, you know, I'm sure there's some things I can work on. I need to work on. Anybody can, you know, there's something I need to work yeah. on. But I push therapy to the youth. Like when they trauma get traumatized, do it then, cause I had the opportunity to do it then. Mm -hmm. My my pop's job offered us therapy, but I didn't take it. You know what I'm saying? So you know I kind of encourage people to young kids anyway to um, try therapy. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, just try therapy. And, so um, five times I'll say is referring to I guess the five times times I've been in prison in Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about any of that or? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to talk about anything. Okay. Yeah. So I guess uh, you know, what got you started? Obviously, you know there was some influence from your childhood, and you know some of the things that triggered you there. You mm -hmm. said like it challenged you challenged some of the thoughts that you had about you know certain things or right. certain people, and it made you make certain decisions in a certain way because of that. 
Yeah. Um, so I guess what what was the road that led you getting to prison? Well, the first time I went to prison, uh, I wrote about it in my book too. Man, I was um, my choice of drugs was uh, PCP back then, and um, you know I was just in the streets doing a lot of stuff, doing a lot of stuff. And my first the first time I went to prison, man, I kind of had a bad trip off the PCP, mm-hmm. and I was and I felt like <clears throat> you know when you do that, you feel like people are trying to keep. So basically, I was with one of my friends. Um, and he had a gun, you know, so we riding around like, you know, I always do. And I, and I felt like he was trying to do something to me. And that resulted to the police pulling up and me shooting at the police, you know what I'm saying? The police, we shooting back and forth at each other. So I went to prison for that. That was, I was like 19 at the time, um, <laughs> 2002, 2001, you know what I'm saying? Um, went to prison for that. I got like a three year sentence. For, um, I was charged with criminal attempt to commit capital murder. But after I got a lawyer, my family bought a lawyer, they kind of, you know, broke the charges down because it was a blessing nobody was hit, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, I ended up with three counts of um, aggravated assault. I took a plea deal for two and I went to prison for, uh, I got sentenced to three years on the D mean, and I had to do three, uh, two months on each year. So once I did my six months, I had to complete a anger management class because that's all they required to throw, boy. You know, I was released in and out basically. <laughs> I turned twenty. Uh, I turned twenty in prison. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You said you sort of uh, neglected the, the therapy when you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that the anger management class in oh, the no. prison? No. <laughs> it was just something to get out of prison. It was like thirty days, man. It's, there's nothing you can do for yourself in thirty days, you know, in that area. And I I, I use drugs to medicate and you know that kind of problem stuff like that. I didn't do therapy, but I use the drugs to kind of cloud it out my mind or whatever. It was, you know, just an outlet that got out of control, basically. Because it's addictive, you know. It, it, it might have started off as fun, you know, but it, it's addictive. So that was that was my first time in prison. For sure. And yeah. so four more times. Four more times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, it's kind of like a revolving door. That's why I try uh, to tell the people, uh, the young people, at that, don't even start it, man. Because it's like once you go, it seems like you keep going back and forth, back and forth until you get enough or until – you get that big sentence that you that you can't get out. You yeah. get a forty year sentence. You got a twenty eight of it. Yeah. I mean, your life is basically over after that. What you gonna do after you being locked up in prison for twenty eight years? You know, exactly. Cause down here in Arkansas, they giving out time like that. You know, you are doing seventy percent of your time. So you know, the second time I went to prison for um, what I gonna prison for the second time? It was a death by receiving charge. I was stealing cars and flipping cars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I got caught in one of the cars. So I was in prison for that the second time, man. And the uh, third time was like gun charge. Then another gun and drug charge. Mm-hmm. It was just a lot of string of things, string of things, yeah. back and forth prison. Life of crime, basically. So that's why I say it. That's why I called up saying, uh, you know, childhood trauma can create a career criminal. It because I don't know anybody that just quit at the one time, you know. Mm-hmm. You're you going to keep doing things. You keep going back and forth. But I guess I can imagine some people go once and stop, but it, it, it wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? That's how it for me. It took me five times from the age of um, 20 mm-hmm. to 37. My last time I got out of prison, I was 37. Well, you know, you know this state, you know, Arkansas, the recidivism rate is you know, almost 60%. Really? really? Like over half of the people that are getting out of prison are coming back for the new charge or repeating the same thing that they've done or a parole offense. I, I believe that. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of them people. I was one of them. And it's it true. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, a lot of that comes from, you know, uh, your childhood. Yeah. Uh, what you experienced as a kid. And so do you want to talk a little bit about what it was that sort of influenced you and what led to you uh, committing your first crime uh, and leading to PCP? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, the first the, the first thing at, at uh, the age of 13, my dad, my, my father was murdered, right? Mm-hmm. And I wrote about that in the book as well. That's where, like, I think, Everything went to the left. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? because uh, the night he was murdered, my mother and I discovered him, um, and his friends murdered, and it kind of like that image stuck in my head so long, and it, it was like now I can see it clear like it happened yesterday, but I don't get angry over it. Sure. But like back at thirteen, I can see it and I got angry. You know, what I'm saying and um, I just reacted, and so that what that led from from uh like the, the I call it the ethic button, like just saying you know any any situation you come man, ethic. You know, just um, you just angry at everybody. Basically, you know, that 
that's where that came from. And to, it took me into like probably the second time of prison, I realized that I kind of messed myself up, my life mm-hmm. up based on my anger. Yeah. And I kind of tried to catch myself, but it was too late. It's kind of like I'm just going back and forth now. It's, it's right. part of my lifestyle at this time. Instead of like something that just happened once, now it's part of me. That's who I am, you know, so it was kind of too late by the end. But I kind I did realize death and uh, understood it better and uh, realized, you know, uh, it's just I real I just understood death better, you know, and just things happen, you know, sometimes things happen to good people and just keep going. But it was like I said, it was too late. By the end I was just mm-hmm. lost. <laughs> I couldn't stop, man. It was just like back and forth. So you had this mindset and it was all you know, based on, like I said, the trauma and the pain of, of seeing all that. Right. And then it led to a, a whole series of things that led you to go into prison five times. So where was the where was the point where you, you changed your mind where like something's gotta change? Well, it was a string of things. I said this a lot. It was a string of things, not one thing. Maybe mm-hmm. like the last time I was in prison, man, like when I started going to prison, they was like two and three, you know what I'm saying? And right. like seeing them grow up and then I, I kind of, I realized that they like hanging around, they kind of like me, you know what I'm saying? I, and I felt like I wanted to be uh, not that humble and this always in prison, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to do different cause you know, and uh, the last time I was in prison, I was in Tucker Union in Arkansas. So they used to come see me, you know, and uh, my mom used to come see me and I was just thinking stuff had done. I'm like, man, it's just, I'm gonna never put, like my mother getting older, nephews, you know, I'm getting older. Like, I'm going to never put them through this again, man. I'm going to just stay out, you know what I'm saying, do what I got to do. And um, at that time, I knew what I was going to, I knew I was going to get out and go get my CDL. So I was like, man, I'm going to just go and get my CDLs and basically just stay gone, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, I think sometimes you got to, you got to change uh, with how they see it, people placing the things. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I did, you know. I can always come back and visit. I don't have to stay here, you know what I'm saying, around the same kind of things I used to be involved in. And it worked out for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, traveling, things like that. Um, my nephews, my mother, man, my family. And basically, it all boils down to um, me, you know what I'm saying? My personal choice. I, I feel like I'd have done it anyway. Yeah. But, you know, other people and things help you make come to that confirm, that confirmation, you know what I'm saying? I just got, I told myself one time when I was 20, first time in prison, I was in Borna Unit, the wildest maximum security prison stabbings, uh, everything, you see everything. And I was like, man, I ain't, I don't, I don't never want to be like these guys in my forties. They 40 years old y- mm-hmm. and yelling, hollering at the top of their lungs. They stabbing people, doing all kind of stuff. And I'm 20 at the time, they 40, that's not really old. But I said, I don't want to, I don't want to be 40 and in prison. But this last time that, that done on me, I, I'm 30, I was 37. And I was like, damn, I'm almost like them guys. I said, I don't want to be like. So that's the thing that made me like, man, I'm through this time. I'm just, I'm just gonna quit doing everything that I used to do. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I know I'm not gonna do crime, not right. nothing illegal. I didn't know what the other side of right looked like, you know. So I didn't know what the other side looked like, but I had to. I was willing to get out and see, you know what I'm saying, and see and just do all the way right. Cause this last time I went to prison, I was doing. I had a job, but I just decided to put a gun in my, just have a gun in my house, you know. So I decided this time not to do anything wrong, not to have a gun take myself, forget about that, don't do anything. So that's what I did, man. I didn't want to be like them guys. I promised myself I wouldn't be like when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Now I'm 37. I was 37 at that time when I got out. And it was harder as well to get out of the prison. It was my fifth time. The parole board kept giving me year to nine. So it was like, I'm like, man, look, they tired of me too. I'm tired of myself. I'm tired of being, they tired of me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's time to just stop doing everything legal and just do everything legal and see where I end up, you know. For sure. I don't got nothing to lose. I mean, I know what doing le- illegal stuff will lead me to, it's prison. Right. So, but I didn't never know what doing, you know, now, you know, I've been doing good for the last five years. Um, everything good. Me and my lady just bought a townhouse in uh, Los Angeles. Everything pr- basically lined it up to um, what I'm doing, you know. I'm attracting better stuff like that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the process of unwinding from all that sure. stuff and getting yourself back on the, the track to where you wanted to be right. was probably didn't happen overnight, right? No, nah, I didn't. I mean, uh, well, mentally, mentally, man, uh, I think I've been doing this so long and it kind of happened overnight, though. But, like, I would get out of prison. I would want to do right. I'd do right for a while, then mm-hmm. I'd go back. So I kind of had the practice of doing right, but I would always fall back. So this time was different. What this time was I already knew what was happened if I fall back. So 
let me just do right and do right and do right and do right. But as far as like when I got out of prison, I had went immediately to the commercial um, CDL school in Pine Bluff. I went like the next month I went there. So I went straight from prison to there. They got for three weeks, got my CDLs. And um, at the time, jobs was closing the doors in my face because they were like, well, you haven't been out long enough. We, we required five years, some seven years. So, you know, with them little times, little spaces, I'd be like, man, forget it. But then I'd be like, nah, it ain't, I already know. It's just a thought, you know, it ain't, it ain't, I'm not going to do it. It's just a thought until that one, you know, keep putting applications to that one, that one company gave me a, a, a chance. And from there, it's just been, I haven't been jobless since. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so you wrote your book mm-hmm. and now you're using that to come back to Arkansas. I know you said like you had to change sort of the, your people, your places, your thing. Right. So like Arkansas was, was your grounds yeah. for all that, but now you're coming back right. and now you've written a book about your story and right. rather influence the, the youth to be, Hey, be better than what I was, right. you know, just do this better. Yeah. What's that been like? Well, um, uh, it's been the easy, it's been easy to me, man. Cause when I come, I do what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. be where I don't supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of easy for me. Yeah. You know, so, uh. What I would like to do, you know, uh, is get into like uh, public speaking to the youth and things like that. It's when I'm down here or anywhere, you know, like in California, in LA, I'm a uh, mentor for a group called Concerned Black Men of Los Angeles. We mentor the youth. So I'm, I would like to get into something down here, you know, when I come down mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, if they request me, come down and, and do some public speaking to the youth down here. Because what I be seeing on the news and stuff like that, man, it's kind of it's kind of wild out here, you know. And, um, it, I'm sure it happened in LA. I'm sure it do, but like I'm, uh, it's like I'm, I'm there. I'm there every weekend because I work Monday through Friday. I'm on the road, maybe Arizona or something, and I'm there every weekend. But it's kind of more like um, it hits different. It hits uh, different when it's here because I'm from here. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I know the people that's involved and you know stuff like that. I know somebody they know things like that. And it's it's kind of where I started, and I feel like I kind of need to do my part here. You know, I'm not saying I need to. Um, clean up the streets and then but like you know just do my part here because this is where it started with me here trip sure. yeah. so you never know who you're gonna reach but yeah, exactly yeah. yeah if somebody had interjected in your life and you're that young and yeah yeah, and, yeah. You know, so much up and i feel like you know i'm the type of person i believe that um i believe prison is needed though i'm just be honest i believe prison needed because i needed it i believe a lot of people out here need it you know because it's Sometimes when you already in that life, ain't nothing nobody can say to you. Cause people try to say stuff to me from time to time, but I just didn't, you know, I wasn't trying to hear it then. But now I know, I understand it now, and I and I recited those things in my mind plenty of times when I was in prison. Things people tried to say to, me, you know, what I'm saying. But at the time, I heard I wasn't even trying to hear it. So I think a lot of these people out here now, you know, you can uh, be there for them, but you need to. They need prison to get that the be uh, away from the distractions out here. Then we need to go to them and try to get to them, you know what I'm saying, after they're there. Because out here, they're not going to hear us. Mm-hmm. They might hurt you. You're trying to talk some stuff, you know what I'm saying, talk, trying to talk good to them. So there, we need some kind of system or program we can implement that uh go to them there and try to talk to them and have resources for them, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. That's how I believe it can happen better. That way, when they get out, they have better options than to go back to what they was doing. Uh, for sure. When you said in, in L.A., hearing about Little Rock, you know what I mean? That it's wild out here. That yeah. that part is struck with me. And yeah, it's like because we think of the I guess Arkansas. So yes, they'll think of like L.A. That, that's wild. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But you're like, yeah. I'm here about Little Rock, right? <laughs> you know about, yeah, yeah. And you know, cause I guess you know, I'm I'm sure things go on there. Cause I hear stuff. You, uh, you might just uh, hear shots. You know, go off or whatever. But uh, I never had a problem there. You know what I'm saying? But like here. You know, it's just been, it's, it haven't, I haven't had a problem here since I've been coming back either though. But like, mm-hmm. this is where it all started. You know, and I, it's kind of like, it, I'm not kind of connected to that out there in Los Angeles like that, you know. But here it's kind of, I'm more connected, you know, where I'm from. Nah, you know, I would like to try to do something here first. Yeah, for sure. While I'm doing stuff out there too as well. Cause I'm a mentor out there too, to kids. To, they not really, they some, they some really, they not at risk, I don't think. They they are some real good, smart, intelligent kids. But the thing is to keep them that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Keep them from because they they from the the hoods and stuff like that. So they got a lot of negative influence. The thing, my goal is to keep them like on the right track. To do what I can do, show what I can share with them, to let them know that you know I've been there. Yep. So if you need to, if you curious about something, you can ask me. I can tell you how it's gonna go. End up for you, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just it ain't gonna. It's either one or two ways, or maybe three at the most. 
Right. It ain't it ain't it ain't uh a positive way. Nothing positive is gonna come out of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's pretty amazing. And now you're in Arkansas just for your book signing. Right. Kind of we talked a little bit before we started rolling cameras. Right. Uh but you're gonna be at the Heritage Heritage. Center. Yep. At uh, Burns Park, right. North Little Rock to do a book signing, entertainment, yep. um, food and everything. Ooh, so. Yep. Saturday, man. From eleven to three. We're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be a good nice setup. And I'm gonna read a, a book out my chap a chapter out of my book, the second chapter. I'm thinking I wanna read the second chapter out of my book. And um entertainment, man, it's gonna be cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have questions as well too, man. If anybody wanna ask like questions or anything about the book, about that chapter, they can ask me. I'm gonna sign some books too. People bring their books, I'm gonna sign them. And I have uh, at least, I, I wish I would have brought more. I had the time to order more. I got like 24 books maybe yeah. available to them there. So okay. something like that, 23, 24 books. Great. Yeah, yeah we're gonna try to, try to head out there. Good, man. So we connected online because you reached out asking if anybody in you know, Arkansas or Little Rock area right. had you know, podcasting. Yeah. So. Obviously, you know, people tag me everywhere because we were, we're, yep. we have a nonprofit that helps, you know, podcasters in Arkansas. That's great. Um, so what made you want to reach out to podcasting? Man, because um, I see, that's all I, so I see podcasts because I watch like YouTube every day. Hold on, I'm saying when I'm on the road, I listen to it and I just drive, you know what I'm saying? So I see all these people doing podcasts. I'm like, this is the thing, man. I need to, I would like to get my uh, message out through them mm-hmm. because uh, I, w- I was trying to do like public speaking, but it wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, coming up with nothing, sure. you know what I'm saying, out there. So I was like, well, I can, let me try to do a podcast while I'm in town. Let me reach out, you know, because I was looking, but I wasn't really seeing nothing down here like that, you know. So uh, I put that post out there, and uh, you came through. You like the you you asked me, like, right off the top. I had I had hit up a couple people, never responded. But I was like, you hit me right back. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. This is what I'm going to do. I appreciate that, yeah. We, so we're, we're playing our podcast festival here in Arkansas. It's the really? first one. Yeah, so we... It's an annual thing that happens every year. But this year, it's a full week here in Central Arkansas. Then we're doing a week in Northwest Arkansas. That's cool. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I love, yeah. yeah, I've been doing this. Uh, so this is the second year. Ah, oh, the second year. Right, yeah. Um, so I, I sort of modeled it after uh, RTX, which happens in Austin, Texas every year. Mm-hmm. And just a big podcast festival. Anyways, I'm just been you know, passionate about podcasting. And Arkansas itself is still trying to figure out its relationship it with is. podcasting. It is, though. Yeah, it is. It's like, how do we use these? It is. And so uh, it's, it's yeah, surprising, not surprising, that you reached out to a few. Not, and some of them didn't reach out back. Didn't um, not a lot of people know how to market the podcasts here. Really? That's another thing. And so... What we'll try to do is bring in people from out of state to come in and sort of teach them like how they they need to be there. So I mean, yeah, they need to be there for real, for sure. Gosh, that's good, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, I know that's a big thing, a big event. Yeah. Like trying to put together, right? This event right here that I'm putting together was like, man, overwhelming. I got I had to have a team. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do was sass and bucks, man. And uh, eight. <laughs> they were like, oh no, you got to do this and that, this and that, this. Yeah. And that. Like, oh, man. Come on. So you wrote, yeah, added author to your resume, but you're, you're adding all these other roles that you're having to, to play too. Oh, you said event organizer and you know, you're drawing your own travel agent, I'm sure. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I got my lady, man. She, uh, she good too. She good with uh, helping me, you know, uh-huh. with a lot of stuff. Cause she, in uh, Los Angeles, she uh independent filmmaker herself. Oh, great. She, uh, author as well. So she kind of, you know, she, she knows about like planning events and well, what it needs to look like and what needs to be there and stuff like that. Uh, even like the like the program, we just made a program before we came down. Like I didn't even thinking about a program. I was just gonna be like, hey, look, you ready to <laughs> you ready to go? You go, you go. Right. But now we got a program, you know, so it's cool, man. It's just set up. That is, yeah. So how are you? How are you using, I guess, the book and your time here to to reach youth right now? I know you got your nephews with you. Yeah, man. I think like I got four days here, man, and and uh, well, school is out right now, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to come back, man, and get in touch with some. I was touching basically with some people, man, but it was like um, when school start back, you know, when school okay. start back. Okay. But like, I'm a firm believer, man, and um, as well, like a person saying they want to do something, change something, you got to start with your family. I don't have any biological children, but I got nephews, I got nieces, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and also look cousins and stuff like that. Then, then see me then and, and know me now, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of think that's the best testimony, man, to um, stay consistent. Right. With what you're doing. Because anybody can be like, yeah, I'm doing this and that. Then the next time they see you, you back in the same thing you've been doing. All right. But my consistency is 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 what I feel like can influence other people. You know what I'm saying? Just you can check my uh, rep sheet or you can just watch me now. You know what I'm saying? You can read my book. 
Mm -hmm. And that's, this is only like a summary of it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, consistency and start with your family, man. If, if every, almost every man I know have children, you know what I'm saying? Or something. So start with your children, you know, and, uh, and keep it real with yourself and be consistent. Cause you never know. There's other people watching you that you don't even know watching. Oh, right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, just, just walk in that light and you will be cool. And uh, I would like to, you know, connect with some people, man. Hopefully, some people will see see this and reach out, man. Uh, some public speaking to schools, uh, YFCA's, anything of that sort. I'm I'm down. I'm ready to uh, spread my message, man. Even even the uh, um, I sent some books when I first published this book in January. I guess my uh, you know, I bought a couple um books and I sent them to uh the last prison I was at, Tucker, Arkansas. They're trying to even even speaking at the prisons, I'm willing to do that. Cause when I was there, it was some guys that was there prior, you know, saying that, but they came back and spoke to us in a program. I was I was in a um, reentry program before I left prison this time, trying kind of trying to teach guys that been in there three four times how to get out and stay out. You know, that's where I got the the uh, information to get my commercial driver's license from there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And there was some guys that came back and was like, you know, speak to us in there. So I'm willing to do that as well too. Any any prison in Arkansas, schools, uh, juveniles, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Great. Well, is there anything we didn't hit on that you want to bring up? Uh, man, just check out my book, man. Just check your sure. book out, man. And uh, if you can, if anybody had opportunities for me to do any public speaking, I'm down for that too. I'm, I'm willing to just give with me. And um, if you available, Sarah, to come out to the the book signing event, you know, yeah. and support, yeah. man, and uh, celebrate with us. And that's about it, man. Okay. We'll put all this, that information in the show notes. Um, and the book's called Five Times a Slave, mm -hmm. Marty's Board. Yeah. Available on Amazon. Amazon, yeah. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and Goodreads. Or both. Five Times a Slave, the subtitles, How Childhood Trauma Can Create a Career Criminal. And that's basically what it's uh, my life, man, my life story. It shows how trauma can create a career criminal in, in, in a lot of cases. Maybe not all, but mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Right. Well, somebody wants to keep up with you because I'm sure they want to. Where can they do that online? You can uh, you can find me at uh Maurice L Maurice capital E capital L on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Yep, Instagram and Facebook. So the best place to reach you if somebody wants to have you as a speaker. Yeah, I'm gonna give you my, uh, can I can I give my number for? Oh yeah, I will. I'm gonna give y'all my information as well, man. If you can't meet, uh, reach me on Facebook or Instagram, my phone number is five zero one. Two nine seven five five one five. You can always reach me there. Always. All right, Rick. Well, it was nice meeting you, Maurice. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The Arcast Podcast is brought to you by the Arkansas Podcast Collaborative. Arcast is the Arkansas Podcast Festival, and it is going to be happening throughout September. That's right. September first through the sixth, we'll be hosting free workshops across Central Arkansas, and on September seventh, we will have the main event of Arcast twenty twenty three at the Innovation Hub once again. On September 20th, we're taking the festival on the road to Northwest Arkansas, where we will be hosting a podcast workshop at the Fayetteville Library, and the next day will be our very first annual Arcast NWA. Tickets, reservations, and sponsorships are available at ArkansasPodcasters.org. Mm -hmm.